Good morning. Good morning. Oh, much, much better. My name is John Drew, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at UMass Boston, and I'm thrilled to be the first one to welcome you to our campus this morning. I hope you enjoyed the performance that you just watched by our UMass Boston Kung Fu and Lion Dance Club. They hope to bring us good luck with today's program, and I'm sure they will. I also think they helped wake us up this morning, I hope. There are quite a few more surprises that we have in store for you throughout today's program, and I really hope by the end of the, end of the day you get a sense of our rich community here. I am honored to have the beacon here. I'm also honored to be sharing this special day with so many students, parents, guests, faculty, and staff. Today's program is truly a milestone. After months of agonizing over college essays, applications, academic information, we come together today to celebrate the students' success and to give them an hopefully help them experience our campus firsthand. We are pleased once again this year to have an increase in applications and an increase in students and guests registered for today's program. It is clear to us that the strength of our academic programs, the diversity of our student body, and the excitement of being Boston's only public university continues to attract great attention. Today's program has been designed to highlight our campus and give you a glimpse of what it means to be a student here. We hope when you leave today, you will better understand the opportunities that are available to you and you'll have all of your questions answered. To truly understand what it means to be a student here at UMass Boston, you need to hear from our students. And so I'm honored to invite to the stage Alyssa Trinidad, a senior here at UMass Boston. Thank you, John. Good morning, students, parents, faculty, and staff, and welcome to UMass Boston. I am Alyssa Trinidad, a senior in the College of Management, concentrating in accounting and minoring in economics. I am a member of the university's honors program and a recipient of the Chancellor's Scholarship. As a native of the town of Winthrop, I have grown up around Boston and I have come to appreciate my city's public university. And today, I am honored to speak before you on behalf of students. My relationship with UMass Boston began when I was a high school senior trying to figure out what college I wanted to attend. I was in your shoes not too long ago, and I attended this very same Welcome Day program. As I sat in the audience, I thought, of, I thought about my options and, I, and what I valued most from my college experience. Immediately, academics, community life, and professional development came to mind. Now as a senior at UMass, I think about how I ultimately arrived at a decision. With the support and fervent approval of my parents, who are with me today, I said yes to UMass Boston. I felt confident in choosing this university, trusting that these four years would lead me to wonderful things. And they have. As I approach commencement this May, I only begin to express how much UMass Boston has significantly impacted my life. First, I've always had high academic expectations, so I sought an institution devoted to academic excellence. I knew that as Boston's public research university, UMass Boston would be able to provide me with what I was looking for in education. Along with the Chancellor's full four-year scholarship, UMass Boston offered me a place in the honors program. I have appreciated that the program has enhanced the quality of my learning experience by offering rigorous yet engaging interdisciplinary courses. In addition, I am also surrounded by faculty and staff who have helped me to, to develop my skills. You too will quickly find that UMass provides a support system to foster your academic success. Another opportunity that UMass Boston offers is the possibility of studying abroad. With the assistance and guidance of the study abroad program, this possibility became a reality. Two years ago, I attended one of the world's most prestigious colleges, the University of Oxford in England. The experience was academically and culturally enriching. It was there that I studied economics and management with Britain's finest and most brilliant minds. The study abroad experience really enabled me to mature and develop into a stronger individual. The second attribute that I sought out of college 
was community life. When I graduated from a small private high school, I was initially nervous about making the transition to a major public university. I quickly realized that with such diversity in students, it was easy to find a group to identify with. I was immediately drawn to a special program in the College of Management called LEAD. And last year, I had been a peer leader of the freshman success community in which I acted as a mentor to new students. I am also a proud student ambassador of my college, the College of Management, in which I represent my college at various events. Another student organization I'm involved in is Delta Sigma Pi, a professional business society. I had been vice president for many years, and it was my duty to lead group meetings, recruit new students, and organize chapter fundraisers. It was through the LEAD program and special opportunities in the College of Management that I emerged as a leader. And I cannot tell you how much my involvement helped me to grow into the person I am today. The last and most important attribute that I sought out of college was the ability to help me launch my professional career. Two years ago, I attended the Accounting and Finance Career Fair, which UMass Boston hosted. I was interested in working for one of the big four public accounting firms, Deloitte & Touche, whose recruiters were actually present at the career fair. With the help of UMass Boston's career services, I was able to land a summer internship with Deloitte in my sophomore year, making me their youngest intern. By the end of the internship, I was pleased to receive a full-time job offer from them, working in the highly competitive and challenging sector of auditing. As I approach commencement this May, I can't help but reflect on all of these incredible opportunities that UMass has offered me. And though my undergraduate career is nearly over, I have decided to further my education as I will attend Boston College this fall for a Master's of Accountancy program with the Dean's Scholarship. I can't thank my advisors and professors enough for providing me the tools to admit me to grad school. I am sincerely grateful to this institution for making all of my dreams of being successful come true. And we too want you to have a successful future, which begins with choosing the right college. I know how difficult this decision can be, as your college experience significantly impacts the pathways you take in life. In consideration of all of the experiences I've had in college, I can confidently say that I made the right decision in choosing UMass Boston. I'm proud to be a UMass Boston Beacon, and I know how much you'll love all of the opportunities you can expect for academic, personal, and professional growth. On behalf of undergraduate admissions and the entire university, I would again like to thank you all for attending this welcome day. We sincerely wish you the best of luck in the college decision-making process, and we hope you succeed in the rest of your academic endeavors. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce UMass Boston's Chancellor. Dr. J. Keith Motley is the eighth Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts, Boston. He took over the role in July of 2007. Prior to Dr. Motley's appointment as Chancellor, he worked in higher education administration for many years serving as Vice President for Business, Marketing, and Public Affairs at the University of Massachusetts President's Office, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs on this campus, and Dean of Student Services at Northeastern University, among other positions. Dr. Motley also serves on numerous boards for local and national organizations, including the United Way of Massachusetts Bay, Roxbury Preparatory Charter School, which he also helped to found, and chair of the board at Kearney Hospital. As chancellor, Dr. Martley is guiding our university through significant and exciting changes as we work to improve our physical spaces, attract even more amazing students and faculty, increase student access and engagement, and forge closer bonds with our community. Please join me in welcoming our distinguished chancellor, Dr. J. Keith Motley. Hold up for a minute. Where are you trying to escape to? Come here, girl, uh, or, or young lady. Um, first of all, she said that she came here from Winthrop. She came here right from Massachusetts. 
She, got, she earned a chancellor's scholarship. Then she went off, and she's probably in every other organization. How many organizations are you on on campus? You, are you in on campus? She's like in 11 organizations. More importantly, she's going to have a J-O-B when she gets out of here. She went out and worked, and her parents and everybody are going to be so happy at commencement, just like I am, that she's going to be able to put that to work. Alyssa, I'm so proud of you. I'm honored to see your growth. I remember when you used to be nervous coming up here doing this. Now I was kind of intimidated to come out here behind you because of how unnervous you are and how you just deliver such a wonderful message. You represent us. I'm honored to have you as a student. I'm honored to have you going off to one of my alma maters to earn your graduate degree, and thank you. And I look forward to giving you that degree at commencement. You know, come on. I'll see you soon. <laughs> So good morning, everybody. When I was listening backstage, you sound like you're still asleep. But we're going to wake you up today. We're going to, I promise you that, that all of these talented people that are here on this campus who are so glad that you had the sense to get up this morning early, get your tea, your coffee, your milk, whatever you had to get, Drive and you got lucky enough to find a parking space because we're going to be building so much out on this peninsula for the future of this institution. Not only building on all the great legacy of students like Alyssa and all those who came before her, but building on the legacy of all the great teaching that started here in the early, in the late 1800s and extended all the way to today. We're building on that foundation. You have an opportunity to be a part of that. You have an opportunity to be a part of what I run to every day. Now, I'm not running so fast right now, but I was not going to miss being here today because I just had to stop by to tell you that you're in the right place. To all the prospective students that are here today, to all the parents, to all the grandparents, to all the friends, thank you. Thank you for understanding that when you look deeper at what you're interested in, instead of listening to someone else's analysis of it, when you come and see it for yourself, it just might mess you up. You just might walk up and discover that all that stuff you heard about poor little old University of Massachusetts, Boston, that there were two students over here when there were 16,000, that Oh, uh, you may not want to go over there because it's not one of the most beautiful places to study in the world. Yes, it is. You can't beat this waterfront location. But more importantly, you can't beat the fact that the faculty that are going to teach you, not waiting for you in graduate school, but as an undergraduate, will change your life. People that have earned the right not to have to teach first-year students run to teaching first-year students. That's the difference. That's the difference about this institution. That's why I'm a reformed guy. I sort of came here with an attitude problem myself. I was at other universities working, and I heard about this place. But I decided to come and see it for myself. So I became incognito, or whatever you say. I came in a sweatsuit, walking around campus, hiding. trying to just fit in. <laughs> Checked it out for myself. Talked to people, and they all were saying the same thing. I love being here. And I looked down, I said, but don't you see the cracks? Don't you see this? No, but I feel this ethic of care that sort of permeates the place. A place where you can come as you are, and that's okay. Because when you leave, not only are you going to be equipped, you're going to go out and transform the world. See, we don't just talk about it, we just do it. So for a long time, 
We let all that stuff swirl around out there about us, and we didn't sort of combat it by doing things like this. But now we bring you in. And so it's grown to a point now where I can't even go for a run around the neighborhood without someone coming up to me saying, well, I'm trying to get my kid into the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Do you think you can help? <laughs> and I say, of course I can't help, but they can help themselves by preparing, as you all have done that are sitting here. You should be honored and proud of yourself that you met one of your goals, which is to be prepared enough to come into a university environment and be successful. You have the tools. All you have to do now is have the right people supporting that growth and that development. And that's what you're going to find as you journey around this campus today. I'll guarantee you that. If you don't find it, just flood my email. My email is my name. Flood it. Just say, hey, Chancellor, I couldn't find anyone that cared about me or anyone who took the time to tell me about my major or anyone who's excited about what they do or anyone who loved your university as much as you profess to. When I walk around this camp, just flood it. Do what you do. I'll write you back, probably in about 36, 48 hours. <laughs> you know, but I will get back to you. So you're in the right place. Represented in this group of people that have been accepted are the hard work and sacrifice of each and every one in the room. You have been here, parents. You have been here, supporters, to help transition these folks. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. How many applications do you have in? Where are they going? Have you been accepted? It's all you've been hearing for the last couple years. And now, here you are. But for the moment, I want each and every one of you to just give yourselves a round of applause for all that work, because you're here today. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, feel proud today, because this is not just the end of that. I want you to understand that when we talk proud around here, you're just getting your P today. You're going to get your R. That will be the day that you roll up here for first day of class, so we'll give you PRA. Then we're going to give you an O at some point in your career. But we never give you that D, because D is life. Life, particularly when you come around here, you understand that learning in life is sort of a lifelong endeavor. It doesn't start when someone gives you a stop when someone gives you a piece of paper. You're learning something every day. And so the, the basis or the what we're trying to teach you here is to keep learning, to keep wondering, to wake up every day and say, what is it that I can learn today? What can I build on inside of myself? What will make a difference? As I journey on, don't all of a sudden become so smart that when your mama tells you something, you got all the answers. They might not know all the answers, but they know one answer, and that is that you'll never be bigger than mom. You'll never be. Mine is sitting in the front audience. Stand up so they can see you. She's five foot three. I'm six foot seven. You know why she's here? She's here to make sure that I didn't come down here today and stay all day with a messed up foot. And guess what? As soon as I exit my behind off this stage, I'm going straight back home because I'm not getting that little lady to beat me up today. <laughs> and she has reinforcements. My wife, my sisters are here as well. So families, feel proud of your young people. Don't ever get so hung up students as you journey here, that all of a sudden you're all of that. There's always something to learn. I learn from you every day. I love learning from our students. People think I like hanging out with you because I'm trying to stay young. Well, that's part of it. 
because being exposed to young people does keep you in a mode where you're always youthful, you know. <laughs> but more importantly, it's about teaching each other. And that's what I love about here. You walk into a classroom, and you're bringing a knowledge base with you. But then you're building on that. So we say we take you to the threshold of learning and opportunity. And then we sort of equip you to jump over into that. And you say, whoa, I'm here. Here I come, learning. But then here's what I meant when I talked about your mothers, your fathers, your grandparents, your friends that are a little older. You cannot feed experience until you've done it. And whether you failed or whether you've been successful, until you've done it, it's very difficult to know how to do it the right way. You can talk about it, but until you've been through it. So that's why I say, always remember to treat those who've come before you with the kind of respect as you get those PhDs and DDDs and this and that and all that and go through this journey because those people have been there supporting and moving you forward. Today is a wonderful day. It's about learning all about this university. Don't leave here without asking the right question because I have all your emails and I'll hear about it. You know, they call it Chancellor's Ears. I can be in the room and you're talking over there, and I'm in that conversation, this conversation, and that conversation. Then I have young kids who teach me how to use, my children teach me how to use all that social media stuff you do. So I have access to what you're talking about. So don't leave here writing and writing on your little networks, oh, the University of Massachusetts Boston, they didn't answer my question that I never asked. So I'm mad at them. I can't believe those people. I was supposed to be in nursing, but they had me in physics. <laughs> but you sat there all day. <laughs> Ask a question. There's no such thing as a not-so-smart question. The only not-so-smart thing about that is not asking it. And so don't leave here with that in mind. I want you to know that the big question that you need to answer today for yourself is, is this where I want to be? When you talk to somebody, pause for a minute, you say, is this where I want to be? Come back if you have to. See if this is just an act. Or is this what's in the culture? We're just around the corner for many of you. Show up. We don't care. We are a public university, which means we're your university, which means you can access us whenever you want to access us. That means you can come here and just hang out. And you can see for yourself. I hope that you learn all that you can today, and that it will influence your decision to say yes. You know, I would come to you in the fall of 2012 and say, um, I just want you to look at college. But I'm coming to you today telling you why you should say yes. Check it out. And then I hope that you will say yes. I would be honored to serve you as your chancellor. And I'll guarantee you that everyone here will work hard every day to make sure that you made the right choice. And when you're feeling like you haven't made the right choice, there will be someone there with an umbrella or some padding to help you get up off the floor or keep the rain out your hair or whatever is necessary to make it so that you understand how to deal with the next steps of earning those letters that we talked about earlier as you continue to be proud about the accomplishments that you have in your life and the difference that you're going to make serving others in your life. 
See, this is not about you. The day you figure out that this journey is not about you is the day that you can walk around feeling better about all of your life's work. Because once you touch the soul of another individual through that which you've obtained, it will be a difference-making experience for you when you understand that. And so we have dozens of very talented people that are going to be around here today. They're going to be answering every question that you have. Before I turn things over to them, I can tell you in general terms, What's in store for you, just a little bit more, before I walk off the stage, Mom, okay? If you choose to accept our initiatives of study here at this university. First in that list is success. We showed you a model of that. I could pick lots of students to come up here and talk about what their life has been transformed to. But she came here talking about it from every dimension of the campus that you needed to hear about. Access to this city is something that's amazing because Boston being the kind of city it is with all of these wonderful institutions, hundreds of thousands of people just like you learning and studying and or teaching, the opportunities it offers for your future are tremendous. Downtown Boston, in all of its concourses, its cultural op opportunities for learning, the social opportunities, you are a subway ride away from everything that you can want to do. And we are part of a diverse and a growing community, which is how we are, be how we are perceived and how we proceed as an institution. We're so proud to have the kind of diversity that we have here. As you walk around this campus, I've had hundreds and hundreds of college presidents come to visit me because they want to see what their university will look like in the future. We have the opportunity of having that kind of institution today, and I'm so proud of that. Our location and our connection mean we have business majors interning at some of the highest places, as you've heard, environmental science students sampling the waters in the Neponset River. English majors studying the manuscripts at the Boston Public Library. Nursing students. Let me tell you about nursing students. <laughs> so your man shows up to the hospital, and he didn't realize that he had to stay for a minute, for a couple days. Then all of a sudden, the word got out that the chancellor was upstairs. University of Massachusetts, Boston trained and or students did not let me get a moment of sleep. They have checked so much stuff. <laughs> Things I forgot were there. They checked. But the competencies, I can say that there are none greater than those that are prepared by the number one nursing program in New England and beyond that exists right here on this campus. And I was so proud to be part of that. Didn't like it at the moment, but had to behave. Because when you talk it, you got to walk it. So they catch me sneaking down the hallway when they say don't walk or don't stand. Get your butt back in bed, chancellor. <laughs> or like one of them told me, you might be the chancellor on campus. <laughs> But you are patient in here. But I was so glad to see them and to be able to say how proud I was to be served by them. And as many of you already know, the city of Boston and its neighborhoods provide our students with thousands of opportunities to serve. They grow in those communities. They come from those communities. The highest percentage of students who come and learn in Massachusetts and stay here and become productive go to this university. They come here from all over the world, knowing that their contributions can impact the world from little old Dorchester Bay. But then they stay here and they make a difference. They don't sit on, we don't have sideline sitters here. You don't just get here and put it up on the wall and say, look at me. 
You don't just dress up in a suit and show up. You dress up and you do something. That's the difference. And of course, even though we're technically in the city, you can see that we're away enough that you don't have to be worried about all kinds of stuff. Like who's moving here, move, you know, you're out here on this peninsula. We say that if someone comes out here on this peninsula to start some stuff, that's what they intended to do. Because it's not easy to get to. We're going to make it easier. We're working to change some of these rotaries and all that stuff, and roadways and all. But we're glad to be out here on this beautiful space. Now, I know that you've seen all these buildings going up. Some of you are going to be beneficiaries of those buildings immediately. One is opening next fall in 2014, but it'll be open in the spring, but we'll test it out and then we'll open it up. Another one that you saw will be open right after that, the building and the dirt's up there. The Edwin M. Kennedy Institute is being built up on the hill. And the Bayside site down the street, all the potential that represents for this campus. We're a campus on the move. So all that state of the art, all those things that you think should be here are here and will be here. And we're so grateful for that. You may notice that that big hole in the ground looks like a big hole now. But I guarantee you when you come in September, you will see that we are well underway to that development. This brings me to the third point, that this university offers an unbelievable small college feel for you. Well, Chancellor, you said there are 16,000 students here. You said that there are thousands of faculty and staff here working. But our classrooms are small. People get to know your name. Hmm. Now, that's good and bad. <laughs> My freshman year in college, I walked into a classroom, Mom, went to the back. And this lady, and I was this student athlete who thought he was all that. I walked in the back of the classroom, and this woman goes back to the classroom, she's the professor, grabs my arm and pulls me to the front. Bears my butt right in class. She said, your mother would not want you sitting back here. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking to myself, does she know my mother? <laughs> but she knew how, her how my mother had raised me. She knew that education was supposed to be first, last, and foremost in my life. Now, I should have known that when I walked over here all those years later and I found out that that woman was one of our alumni from this university, who had me way back then, who's with me today as a Board of Visitors member, but was my teacher, pulled me out the back of the classroom, showed me and demonstrated that ethic of care even over at another institution, that I was in the right space. So we got that small college feel. I walk around. Most of the time, I'll be scootering around on that one little knee thing. See, this is what I love about the University of Massachusetts Boston nurses. PT had me on crutches. So I was like working out on them crutches, you know, coming down the hallway and the nurses were scared because I'm swinging like I'm still 22. So one of them whispered in my ear, they said, Chancellor, they got this thing. You could put your knee on it and you could just ride it like a scooter. <laughs> that way you don't have to use crutches. That was my University of Massachusetts Boston folk. I called over here, I said, go get me one of them little scooter things. And guess what? I'm scootering all around. Now, I didn't understand at the time. I thought they were trying to help me out. They were trying to get my butt back to work because they understood that this is the most important time for us. I would not be here today if I didn't believe in this institution and the fact that you are saying yes to the right place. I would not have got up out my bed with a messed up foot just to make sure you knew that this chancellor cares about you and wants you to say yes It would be proud to serve you. I would not be here today if I didn't have the same kind of foundation that you have, one that's built tough. So when it gets a little rough, 
you can get up and do something about it. I would not be here today if all of you wouldn't said that you were showing up just to check us out. So I'm proud of that. I'm honored by your presence. You go out today. You learn as much as you can. You make the right decision. I wish you luck no matter where you go. But I guarantee you that if you come here, we will help you not just change your life, but the lives of so many others that you're going to serve. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to seeing you in September. Take care.